Welcome back. Today I want to go over world paths. Uh, to do that, we're going to need a new world for testing. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new world. I'm going to go over to home, create new world, grid, private, and I'm just going to call this uh, test world 2. With this created, uh, I'm then going to immediately go ahead and save it. I will put something in it so that we can see that it's there. If you're wondering what it is on the top of the screen, I'm wearing a hat. It's Christmas, so we, uh, we wear hats at Christmas. Um, here's a box. And then we're going to go ahead and save this world. So I'm going to go to session, uh, save as here, and then I'm going to make sure that we save it to the inventory in this temp2 folder. So save to inventory. That will save that and it will vanish. I'm immediately going to respawn it out because uh, I've got some stuff to edit on it. Uh, but first of all, I want to talk about the difference between a world orb and a world. Um, whenever you see a world orb like this or in your inventory like this, it isn't the actual world. It's just an object which links to the world. Um, that's sometimes a confusion that people have. So for example, when I select this and then I push delete here, um, it won't actually delete the world, it will just delete that link to the world. You can think of it like a, a browser hyperlink, you know, or like a, a file sharing software, you know, you have that link and it takes you somewhere. That's what the world orb is. But the world orb provides a sort of interface in a lot of different ways to um, access information about the world and change that. One of those being the world path. So if we go up to edit metadata here, Inside this world orb, you'll see here that we can change world path. Now, for world path, you want to um, make it a folder name. Do not include the world name on the end. That is added um, not automatically, but it's 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 just there. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. Um, so, for example, in the world path here, I'm going to go ahead and do worlds um, and test. One second, I've got to double check. Yep, okay. You must use black back slashes as well. Um, you can't use forward slashes here. So I'm going to say that this is test two. Uh, no, no, tests. Remember, it's a folder name, not a world name. So worlds tests is this world path for test world two. I'm going to hit save. Now we have to wait for everything to sync. Um, when you edit the world metadata, um, not a lot of people will remember to wait for stuff to sync. So they'll wonder, hey, why hasn't that persisted? And that's the answer. So we can reopen this and it's like, hey, that's there, world's test. So why would you use the world path now you've got it set up? Well, it's used for um, things where you're interacting with the world's direct uh, URL, um, either when you're loading on a headless or when you're loading it through protoflux, uh, components, etc. So usually when you're loading a world, you'll need its record uh, URL. You can do that by going to session and then copy record URL. And if we spawn that out into a piece of text, so text basic, edit, enter, um, you'll see this link here. Now this is unwieldy. This is a very long link with this, which is very random, very, very random. Um, difficult to type, difficult to get right, difficult to remember. Um, but because we set up the world path over there, uh, for this world, we can actually use a different format for this URL that will work with headlesses and protoflux and the components like I was talking about. Um, because we've now added that world path, we can um, recreate this URL using that world path. So the recreated URL will be resrec, col uh, colon, whack, 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 um, u dash, probably prime, uh, forward slash uh, worlds. Actually, I need the, need the world path up here because I'm forgetful. We are recording after all. There we go. Uh, worlds, uh, forward slash tests forward slash uh, test world two, done like that. Um, so you'll see that it's still within my namespace. You'll see my name there, u dash probable prime, but instead of being forward slash and then a big record name, it's forward slash and then the world path followed by the world name. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this, save it to that same inventory folder just to prove that it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, save Say felt, sorry. Um, there we go. Not quite sure why that said like open. Oh, it's because I had that selected. Yeah, okay. Uh, so now I've got that. I'm going to go ahead and close this world. I'll close and uh, save changes so that uh, those pieces of text are still there just in case we need them. So now we're back in my cloud home. And if I go over to some empty space here and I open up Protoflux and I jump down to the world category. I can go to open world, spawn this in, and then I need that URL back. So I'll go ahead and spawn that out of my inventory. I could also put it on my clipboard, but hey, I'm forgetful. I'm recording a tutorial. Uh, so I'm going to edit this. And 
put it into our URL input box. And then we need to set up a couple of things here. Uh, we will do autofocus, yes. Uh, loading indicator, yes. You sometimes don't need to specify all of these, but when it comes to world management, I always recommend just specifying as many as possible just to sort of uh, make you happy. So again, we're recording a tutorial, so make private. That also sounds like a good one to do. Um, relation doesn't really matter that much, um, so we should be good to go. So we're going to hit async uh, call here, and we're back in the world. It's got the cube and everything else that we were playing with, including the, the metadata box. Uh, so there you go. Uh, it basically allows you to replace this unwieldy URL with this wieldy URL. Um, you can see this in the cloud homes um, that we have, the uh, templates that you use when you're a, a new user. Let me just grab my screenshotting application and I'll show you. If it will open promptly, that's great. Um, so we did this uh, for that purpose. So you can go here and this is how we load the, um, the cloud homes when you first um, have an account. Um, so uh, we have stored world orbs in G-Resonite World's home templates, and there's a cloud world orb there, which is the cloud, and um, it is uh, its world path is world home templates, and uh, same goes for local and tutorial. To prove that, I'm going to go ahead and swap back to uh, my home, change this up, and we can do here, which I've got it somewhere. Uh, Here it is. Uh, we can do templates tutorial like this. And then we can do uh, cool. And you'll see that we've landed in the official tutorial experience. Makes it a lot easier to manage as well um, because um, world paths can allow you to refer to um, distinctly unique actual worlds, right? Provided they're in the same world path and they have the same name, it will work. Um, and that means you're not relying on a direct record ID. This means that um, theoretically, the content team could immediately swap out this tutorial world for something completely different. Let's say instead of wood flooring, they wanted to make a new version that had metal flooring, they could do that and um, Myself um, and Fruits and every other person that's programming on our team would not have to change anything because they're using the world paths. And all our code does now is it says, when we want to load the tutorial, load uh, that exact URL that I just showed you. Um, no, not this one, this one. Load this URL, and then it just loads whatever is set up and configured to use that world path. There you go. I will speak to you later.